Hello there, I'm Rudolf Balaz. I'm a program manager at Microsoft. Uh, I've been working on graphics tools for the last few years. And today is the first in a series of talks that are going to talk about our new graphics tools. What I'm trying to do with these talks is focus on useful things that developers and others could actually use these graphics tools for. And today I'm going to talk about capturing and reporting bugs to whoever has the graphics bugs. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you are a graphics developer, so you may need to disseminate some of the information I give here to either your artists or your program managers or you know your testers, so that they can use these techniques to report bugs to you and make your life a lot easier. Uh, hopefully, your audience, um, um, your hopefully your beta testers will also pick this up and be able to report lots of interesting bugs for you that you you can get that sort of information from the field on graphics cards you don't actually have in-house. So with that, you know, have you ever thought about, you know, have you ever encountered a bug that only happens on a specific machine? Or one that only happens on the artist machine, no matter how much you try and reproduce it on your development machine? Or have you ever wished that the artist or beta tester could reproduce that bug that they hit that only seems to happen when you're not around? And, you know, what if uh, you wanted a really quick way of pinpointing where a bug is? Is the bug in your game? Is the bug in the OS? Is the bug in your hardware? Those are some of the things that you can use uh, the tools I'm about to show you for. So first of all, let me give you a quick background. I'm, I'm going to keep this short, just one slide. Uh, there are new graphics tools in Windows 10, and because graphics tools are one of those things that always need to match the actual graphics binaries that are in the OS. Um, if you use versions that are older, you know, things you can have uh, compatibility issues. What we decided to do with Windows 10 is we actually made the graphics tools part of the OS and we include it as an optional feature or a feature on demand as it's called. And what this allows you to do is you can actually download uh, the graphics tools very simply onto any Windows 10 system. It will get pulled down from the cloud and put onto your system, and then you can use them. And one of the things that is probably most useful in that, uh, that set of tools for um, the specific thing I'm, I'm going to be showing you today is a new command line tool. It pretty much lets you capture every uh, 3D API call that your application makes and then play them back. That way you can get a repeated uh, um, you can have the actual frame that got rendered incorrectly repeated multiple times. It's great for as a sort of a tool for initial diagnostics. It's a great for uh, reporting problems. Like I say, once you've taken a capture, you wind up with a BSG log that has every API call your application made when, when you captured it. And then you can play it back over and over again, and it's repeatable, and the developer who needs to debug it can debug it. And of course, you know, you can now use this for regression testing, either in an automated fashion or as a manual fashion. But you can try it on different hardware. You can play it back on AMD, on NVIDIA, on Intel, on any sort of graphics vendor you want. As well as you can even play it back in our software renderer to actually see if um, the issue is within the hardware or within the um, application, whether you're calling the API incorrectly, etc. So there's a lot of things you can do with these tools, and they're built into the operating system. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is DXCAP. It's a very lightweight tool uh, for capture and playback of frames. It's easy to install, but it has a very small footprint. And log files can actually even be opened in Visual Studio 2015, and you can inspect the full results and see exactly what your application was doing. The way you would actually do install this uh, tool, I'll show you here, is if you go to your Windows Start button, select Settings, and we go to System, there's an Apps and Features, there's Manage Features, and there's the Add Features. And in this list, as you can see, Microsoft has, has made a lot of optional features in the OS. Mostly this is to reduce disk space. Things that, we, that not every single user needs are not on the disk by default. Well, Graphics Tools is down here, and if we scroll down to Graphics Tools, Nice um, alphabetical list. Graphics tools for uh, tools for DirectX. You can hit install, and away you go. All right. 
So I basically showed you it installs graphics tools. Now the things it gives you is the DX cap functionality as well it gives you um, the SDK layers for D3D, uh, both 11, 12, and D2D. And the SDK layers are used in debugging to actually validate whether, validate the API calls you're making. So if you're passing in incorrect parameters, um, if it's detectable, those SDK layers will warn you when you're doing something wrong. The capture playback infrastructure is installed by installing um, this feature on demand, as well as the command line tool. So with that, I'm going to start by uh, doing a few command line things. So let me just bring up a command prompt. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a simple little desktop application here. And I'm going to, actually, before I do that, let me first show you a couple of things about DXCAP. So DXCAP-info is useful. Uh, when you're reporting bugs, because it actually tells us a bunch of information about what do you have installed on the system, what versions of which DLLs, what directories they're in, and helps us actually diagnose, you know, are you seeing a bug that's known in an earlier version, or is this a, a problem in a new version? You can actually do dxcap dash question mark or anything, you'll get a really long list of command line options. I'm not going to go through these today, but there's a lot of information that you can actually, a um, lot of different options that you can use uh, with this command line tool. And it's automatable, so you can put it into scripts and things like that. So with that, what I'm going to do next is just do a capture of a, of a desktop application. So we're going to do dxcap dash c and I think it's x64 debug and the city demo executable. And this is a, a straightforward capture. The application is running now. Um, the APIs are being captured. You notice I moved the screen and the application paused for a second. You'll actually see that glitch in the capture as well because it, the pause will actually be recorded as well. All right, so that's, you know, a good number of seconds. You can capture any D3D11 or D3D12 application this way. And to play it back, we just do simply dxcap-p. And there's a number of options here as well. I can repeat this over and over again. I can, uh, you know, make it go full screen to play it back full screen. And I'll just do that one more time so you can see it. Now, the one thing you may notice is that the playback is actually running slightly faster than the application. And the reason it's doing that is because there is no application running here. This is purely the API, the D3D API calls being played back. So it's really, really fast uh, because we have no additional CPU overhead in, in that sense. So let me just show you there. What, has, what gets generated is this file called uh, VSG log. And in fact, I've run this a couple of times, and you see that I have three BSG log. Each one of them is, is numbered, and there's a date associated with it, and so on. So every time I take a capture, I will get a log. You would simply take one of these logs and send it to whoever you want to debug the actual problem. All right. So with that, let's, let's look at a couple other things. Now, what I did on the previous example was do what we refer to as a stream capture. You can take a really long capture of an application. If you take some of the larger triple A type titles that have, you know, multi gigabytes worth of data that's associated with the app, um, your captures can get really large. Uh, during the last uh, game developer conference, I was showing off uh, a number of games that I had done traces of, and I had over, over 100 gigabytes worth of traces. Um, so these captures are not replacements for videos. If you just want to show somebody what's happening, take a video. But if you want them to debug it, you have to give them an API or the API calls. But in general, the, the larger traces um, get really big. So one of the things you might want to do is capture a specific frame or a specific set of frames. Or you want to, may want to repeat that frame several times. So let me show you a couple of these to see what happens. So like if I do DX cap. Um, dash frame 10, let's say, and we'll do the same 
x64 debug city demo so it'll go till frame 10 which we probably pass now and if I close this now when I play it you'll see just one frame so since it's only one frame I want to do a repeat repeat let's say 50 times and so it plays that same frame over and over again 50 times and for debugging this is awesome because I can actually you know hook up a debugger to this executable watch these API calls come by and and capture those the other thing I can do is I can play this back on what we refer to as the warp rasterizer which is a software implementation and we have both a, a DX10 or DX11 and a DX12 version of this rasterizer so if I'm seeing corruption on the hardware I can simply run this and if all of a sudden the corruption doesn't happen then it's highly likely that I've you know stumbled across some driver bug and I should probably report the problem to the driver vendor the other one that can be useful when actually trying to capture a particular uh, issue in a in an app is the manual frame thing and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to DX cap slash frame manual and I'm going to do manual plus one there's actually a couple m modes of manual manual you can ju if you just specify manual it will say you know press a key to start recording press the key to stop recording manual plus one means whenever I hit spacebar it's going to take a capture of that frame which is the thing I want right now so I'm going to do a capture of x64 debug city demo okay so it's running now and I'm going to just take a capture and that's probably plenty I just want one so let's close that DX cap dash P again the frame is too short so let's do repeat 50 times or 40 times there's the frame I captured manually and I can use that by just watching what's happening on the screen and when I see a glitch I hit the space bar and it captures it okay uh, another aspect is in Windows we have uh, uh, universal applications or modern applications or however there you want to refer to them these are slightly harder to find because the executable names are are not as easy to discover and so for example on this on this machine I have a the template the DX12 template that comes with Visual Studio compiled and installed and it's there and if I go to my uh, start menu I can actually go launch it and away it goes but finding it the exact right command line I need to use to launch it with DX cap is a little difficult so what we've done is we've put into DX cap the capability of look that up for you and actually give you that information so I'm going to do DX cap direct X app which is what I called it and what you get back is a bunch of information like where is it in the, on the hard disk what's the file name and of course I would just love to try and type this file name um, it's not that easy so to do DX cap with one of these modern apps all I have to do is copy this command line and run it and the, it automatically launches and captures the app for me I can you I can edit the command line and add other options if I wanted to and when I close it I can now play that one back and it saved me all that effort All right. So now what? Well, <clears throat> there's two number of things you can do now. You have a log. You can now send this log to either your developer or your hardware vendor or a colleague or whoever you want, and they can then go look at these logs and try and analyze them. Or we can quickly open them in uh, Visual Studio and, you know, um, see see what's up, like see what's going on. And actually, what, I'm going to do that right now so let's just actually delete all these logs because I've created a whole bunch of them oh I guess I have something open um, let's let's take a capture DX cap uh, I'm gonna capture a frame and I'm gonna
so we're just going to capture a single frame and it was called city demo yeah, there we go probably 34 is the one I'm looking for <clears throat> so if I just actually run that BSG log what it'll do is actually open Visual Studio's graphics analyzer and in this there's a bunch of stuff um, like there's an event list that lets me look at all the draw calls actually if I want to see all the D3 calls they're all here and I can walk through them um, but typically I'm only interested in the draw calls and what you can do is basically step through those draw calls and as you step through them you'll see that the big uh, window here changes I can minimize this frame list since I only have one frame in this and I also have what referred to as the pipeline stage at the bottom and I can go and look at details about what is being rendered so for example if I double click on what's being passed into the pipeline I get to see the geometry that was passed there and anyway so a future presentation I'll walk through this UI more but just to give you an idea that this is how you know the developer would then debug and analyze the application all right so with that thank you very much for your attention today and there'll be more next time um, we'll look at uh, Visual Studio graphics diagnostics we'll look at GPU timing we'll look at various use cases for all of those in future uh, videos thank you very much and have a nice day